if you love the ocean, you probably love plankton too. Plankton are vital to the marine ecosystem and support most of the marine life we know and love. So today, we're going to take a little field trip, collect some plankton, and learn all about it. So what is plankton? Plankton is a general term applied to a variety of organisms across multiple kingdoms and phyla. The name plankton comes from the Greek term planktos, meaning drifter or wanderer. This makes sense because plankton have a limited ability to swim and literally go with the flow. Some plankton, like this moon jellyfish, can be larger than you would expect. Others are so small, we need a microscope to see them. Boynton Inlet in Palm Beach County is a great place to collect plankton. I arrived at around 7 a.m. with a nice strong incoming tide. The seawall along the south side of the inlet provides a great place to launch a plankton net. Plankton are often classified by size. This net can catch plankton as small as 153 microns. Plankton in this range are often called net plankton. Once in the water, the current will do all the work for me, pushing water through the net and concentrating all of the plankton inside. You can also pull a plankton net behind a boat. Either way, it's an effective way to catch plankton. In just a few minutes, it's time to bring the net back up and see what we caught. Because of the fine mesh size, the water flow pushes all the plankton to the back of the net, where it's collected in what we call a cod end. The cod end is detachable, so I can unscrew it to access the plankton sample inside. Inside this jar, you can see all sorts of little things moving around. That's plankton. And of course, because I'm in a coastal system, we get lots of sand and debris as well. Now it's time to say goodbye to the rising sun and head back to the lab and see what we found. We caught plenty of plankton. You can see them all moving around in our sample bowl. But in order to really understand what's going on and what we collected, we're going to have to use a microscope. So it's time to set up a few slides. Microscopes are awesome tools that allow us to gain a better perspective on a world that exists on a much smaller scale than our own. There are two major types of plankton, zooplankton and phytoplankton. Phytoplankton is also known as plant-like plankton because like plants, they are photosynthetic. This means that they make their own food using sunlight, carbon dioxide, and water and are the base of the marine food web. Even more important, through photosynthesis, they produce oxygen as a byproduct. Phytoplankton contribute over 50% of the oxygen in Earth's atmosphere. Diatoms are phytoplankton that are shaped like little pillboxes. These boxes are made of silica dioxide, one of the major components of glass. Dinoflagellates look like little alien spaceships. They are actually protists with two flagella, which are whip-like appendages that help them move around. When some dinoflagellates get too abundant, they can actually cause red tides. Zooplankton are also known as animal-like plankton because they're consumers, meaning they can't make their own food like phytoplankton. This is a copepod, and they dominate the net plankton and are one of the most important herbivores in the sea. Just think about deer or other grazers on land and you'll get the idea. This copepod is creating a little current with its appendages, bringing in phytoplankton for feeding. Some zooplankton, like copepods, are called holoplankton and spend their whole lives drifting with the currents. Another example is an ostracod, 
these tiny crustaceans have a two-part hinged carapace that encloses their body, giving them a common name mussel shrimp or seed shrimp. There are predators in the plankton community, and the arrowworm is sure to make copepods run for their lives. Another category of plankton is meroplankton. They are only part of the plankton community during their larval and juvenile stages. An example of meroplankton is the nauplius larvae of a barnacle. It is distinguished by a pair of horns on the head. These little nauplii will continue to change until they settle out on a hard surface and become an adult barnacle. This is a larval form of a crab called a zoea. Over the course of a few months, crabs will go through several zoeal stages, getting bigger each time. Eventually, the crab will morph into its final, familiar form. This juvenile crab is ready to start its new life on the bottom. Just about every living organism on a coral reef, like this one here in the Florida Keys, spend their larval stages as plankton. Plankton also provide food for a variety of organisms. This sea rod has its polyps open, waiting for the current to bring planktonic food. Barrel sponges are another example of a filter feeder, continuously taking in its tiny prey through a maze of pores and channels within its body. Without plankton, there would be no food for the small fish that this goliath grouper hunts. Plankton really do play a vital role in the marine ecosystem. Plankton really do support marine ecosystems. Even the largest animals on the planet, whales, feed on plankton. But the chemistry of the water is changing. Increased carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is causing ocean acidification, which threatens planktonic communities. I hope you learned something about plankton today. If you enjoyed the video, comment below, click like, and subscribe for more. Till next time.